All right, so we have an update, and this is a major update, like no pun intended, when it surrounds the situation surrounding Jonathan Majors. Now, we all know we as much as we possibly can from the last video that I did about this whole situation involving Jonathan Majors. But now, these text messages from the woman, and they're saying alleged now because the names are covered up, so you don't know like if it's from her or someone else. It's a lot going on. I'll put it like that has been put out there. So this is the text message right here. And as you can see, it said it started at 858 a.m. and ends at 932 p.m. I'm recording this video on March 30th, 2023. So I'm only going to assume that these text messages are from maybe the 29th, possibly, maybe. Because I highly doubt that there being that this was sent on a, the Thursday because of the timestamps. So as you can see right here on your screen, all of these messages right here are from her. And this is two right here from him. And it says, there's no note, just so you know that, just you knowing what happened. And it's, I couldn't, at first I couldn't tell what it was saying up here, but right up here, if you look at the bottom of the lettering and look at it right here, it says goodbye, Jonathan. I can see the G-O-D-D, G-O-O-D-B-Y-E, J. O N A T H A N. So that says goodbye, Jonathan, right here. Like I had to like squint a little bit to see it. Then it says there's no note, just you knowing what happened. And then he replied at 8:58 a.m. saying, "Did you leave the keys?" And he put goodbye and they gray out the name because remember we still don't know who this woman's name is. All we know is that she's 30, and apparently she's white. That's all we know. Then comes the other three texts that come at 6 p.m. And at 9.32 p.m., it says, please let me know you're okay when you get this. They assured me that you won't be charged. They said they had to arrest you as protocol when they saw the injuries on me and they knew we had a fight. I'm so angry that they did, and I'm sorry you're in this position. We'll make sure nothing happens about this. I told them it was my fault for trying to grab your phone. I only just got out of the hospital. Just call me when you're out. I love you. Then she replied again at 9.32 p.m., it says they just called again to check on me and I reiterated how this was not an attack and they do not have my blessing on any charges being placed. I read the paper they gave me about the strangulation and I said point blank this did not occur and should be removed immediately. The judge is definitely going to be told this. She ensured this to me. I know you have the best team and there's nothing to worry about. I just want you to know that I'm doing all I can on my end. I also said to tell the judge to know that the origin of the call was to do with me collapsing and passing out and your worry as my partner due to our communication prior out of care. She promised all will be relayed. So that is pretty much the entire text that we have so far as it pertains to this. Now I can see this going a couple of different ways, not completely all the way in his favor, but maybe possibly somewhat in his favor. I say, well, let me start with the uh, the latter first, possibly going in his favor for the simple fact that she is taking accountability for what happened and explaining that this was not her, that, that, was, that this was not his fault. It was some other things going on that led up to this and everything's being blown out of proportion. The part that could possibly not work in his favor is because they released these text messages before the video. Remember, his attorney said that they had the video from inside the cab, plus the testimonies of the cab driver, plus two witnesses that saw everything go down. Now, that came before we saw these text messages. They said all of this a couple days ago. My thing is this. If you have all of this these testimonies in this video, especially this video, why haven't we seen the video yet? Because I think everybody is going to want to see this video because that's going to be the definitive proof right there that Jonathan Majors, if he is or if he is not as innocent as they're playing this up to be. Because these text messages, anyone can look at this and say, oh, this looks very scripted. It looks like they told her to say this and kind of play it off to make everything kind of smoothly go into that direction. I personally, if I was his lawyer, after saying that we have this video and these testimonies would have said, well, not would have said, would have released that video, foot, that video footage. 
then you wouldn't even have to release this. I mean, you could have released this, you know, if you wanted to, but it probably wouldn't have been needed. Because now with this out here, now people are going to pressure even more to see that video. They're going to want to try to make this as public knowledge as possible that, okay, here's the video. And now not only that, that video is going to have to match what's said in these texts by his girlfriend about him, her grabbing the phone and all this other stuff that has been put out there in various reports. Now everything's going to have to match up. Whereas if they would have just released the video first, then you would have been able to visually see with your own two eyes what happened. So they did this in a complete reverse. They should have did it video first since you said you had it. And then if you wanted to put anything else out there, then do it that way. Because now people are going to side eye this even more. People are going to look at it like, hmm, I, I don't know. I'm not so sure. At first, I, you know, I, I really I wasn't sure at first, but now I'm really having my doubts. So a lot of people are starting to look at Jonathan Major's attorney with the side eye. You know, everyone was like really on the side, like, oh, snap, she actually got something. The, the girlfriend's recanting her story and all this, that, and the third. But then these text messages come out before the video that you said you had. Whereas you should have released the video first. And then this, if you wanted to release these texts. So that's pretty much where I'm at with it right now. Me personally, if I was his attorney, I would have released the video first with what I had. If I said that I have it, then put it out there, you know, find a way to put it out there or better yet, don't even release anything until after the video is released. If you can't release it right now, not put these out here. And right now, this these texts right now is labeled under alleged texts. So now people are thinking, well, anyone could have sent these text messages. It doesn't have to. It didn't have to come from her. And shoot, it didn't even have to come from him. So, especially since we don't know whose phone this these texts are coming from, it's going to be a lot of questions with this going forward. So, this is pretty much the most, most recent update right here. I just wanted to bring that to you because this is going to be definitely an ongoing cycle, an ongoing story for a little bit. Hopefully, it doesn't stretch out too long. But, like I said... Me personally, I would have released the video first if I claimed to have that. That would have definitely come out first before anything else. Y'all tell me, though, down in the chat or in the comment section, what would you have done? Would you have released that? If you said you had that video first, video, would you have released that first before these texts? Or would you have done it this way? Me personally, I think they did this completely backwards. And that's not, in, in my opinion, as a lawyer, that is a rookie move. Hopefully... There is a legit reason or a good concrete reasoning as to why they decided to go this route. And hopefully, possibly it works out in his favor because right now a lot of people are side eyeing this even more.